Shadow and I are camping tonight on the Kaibab Paiute Indian Reservation. And it has pristine, dark, Bortle One skies. So all we need now is for the remaining clouds to blow away. And we should have a beautiful night of astrophotography. Well, good morning. <laughs> for those of you that have watched my videos before or that are into astrophotography, you know when you go out to a remote dark site like this, you're not going to get much sleep. And I didn't. If I got maybe two hours at the most, I would be surprised. But that's because the skies were clear and beautiful. And I was busy doing what I came here to do. Deep space astrophotography. I'm actually camped at a campsite on the Kaibab Paiute Indian Reservation that is run by the tribe. You can see there's not very many people here. <laughs> And why is that? Because it gets to be 110 during the day here. <laughs> so this is, this is August. Only crazy people come out here in August. And if you're into astrophotography, you know, well, that's kind of us. And if you aren't, then you know we have to be to do this. But I tell you, it's worth it. And I'm gonna show you why here in just a minute. Let me show you what we were imaging with. This is the Orion 350 millimeter focal length, 70 millimeter aperture quadruplet, a refracting telescope with a very wide field of view. And what we went after with this telescope, we needed a wide field of view. And we're gonna talk about that. Here, This is the Orion 1000 millimeter focal length, 195 millimeter aperture. And the image we were going after last night, this has a much higher magnification. This was more suited for that image and we'll talk about that. But for now, I gotta actually start packing up before it gets to be 110. Shadow and I are out walking and exploring a little bit on the Kaibab Paiute Indian Reservation. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. The reservation is 121,000 acres in size. The southernmost border is about 50 miles from the Grand Canyon, and the northernmost border is the same border as the border of Arizona and Utah. And it houses, it has five tribal communities on the reservation. From where we live in St. George, it's about an hour and 20 minute drive. The Paiute Indian Reservation is large, but just a few miles further, and we come to the Navajo Reservation. And the Navajo Reservation is 27,000 square miles. There are 10 U.S. states that are smaller than the Navajo Reservation. It covers the corner areas of Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. There are approximately 350,000 members of the Navajo Nation. They have their own government, their own law enforcement. They are essentially a nation within a nation. Shadow just took off after a rabbit. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> These are jackrabbits out here, and they are big and fast. He's not going to catch it. Little buddy, you're not going to catch it, buddy. I don't care. I'm going to try. <laughs> so, last night... The first image that we went after with the smaller quadruplet is IC4592, or otherwise known as the Blue Horsehead Nebula, not to be confused with the 
rather famous Horsehead Nebula in the constellation of Orion. This is in the constellation of Scorpius, and it is enormous. It's also relatively close to Earth, approximately 400 light years away. And it's big, 40 light years in radius. And unlike an emissions nebula, where the atoms that make up the space dust and gases are hot and radiating light and glowing, essentially, this is a reflection nebula. It is a big patch of dark, dense space dust and gases. And, and dark nebulae that are lit from behind, the light kind of makes its way through a little bit, tend to have a bluish hue to them. And that's what this has. And right in the correct spots to form an eye and different features of what it represents, which it looks, it truly looks like a horse head. Now, unfortunately, it's very low on the southern horizon, and I hoped to get about two hours of time on it, but I had some challenges getting set up, and by the time I got rocking and rolling, I only was able to get 40 minutes on this target, and I haven't processed it yet, so I'm hoping it turned out good enough, but I'll show it to you anyway, and we'll, we'll see what we can get with 40 minutes in a Bortle 1 5,000 elevation location. Shadow, your nose. What did you do? It's all dirty. Come here. What did you do? What did you stick your nose in? What hole did you find? It's starting to get hot. And <laughs> he's looking for shade. So the second target that we went after is called the Helix Nebula, sometimes referred to as the Eye of God and or my favorite, the Eye of Sauron. And it does indeed look exactly like an eye. It's approximately 600 light years from Earth, much smaller than the Horsehead Blue Horsehead Nebula. It's about uh, 2.8 light years in radius. So, you know, approximately five light years in diameter. And it has a very interesting creative history. You'll see in the middle of it a star. That star was once a lot like our sun. And then as it reached the end of its life cycle, it collapsed in some and then it didn't go supernova, but it burst enough to puff out its outer layers. And that's what you see. As you look at the nebula, you'll see that star right in the middle and all of that nebulosity around it was what it blew off. And it is destined, that star, to become a white dwarf. But for now, it's left us with a really beautiful nebula. A lot like this beautiful area out here. We're gonna head home. We got some pictures to process. 